she ain't got no money in the bank. Going on guys, Jack here and I'm back with episode 26 of my Swansea City crew And before we get into this episode guys, if you are enjoying the series as always make sure you hit that like button to unlock a new video coming out tomorrow. Also if you are new around here then why not hit that subscribe button too, I would very much appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get into the game against Aston Villa at the Liberty Stadium where obviously last episode wasn't the best, it was kind of a mixed emotions, our unbeaten record Domestically got beaten, but we did beat our great rivals Cardiff to advance into the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup, which was a, a very, very good game in a while. So if you haven't checked them out, make sure you do, um, just to keep up to date with the, um, the the series, really. But as you can see here, we are well ahead on goals against here. We are probably an absolute nightmare to play against for other teams. You know, I, I think teams really do dread coming against us. Only 13 goals let in through the whole of the season is just... If we get below 20 goals conceded in the whole season, I will be so impressed with the team. I really would. But as you can see, we get into the ball here. We'll be a villa actually. As an example, a shot goes through the Pantinamon. Good save there from him though. But yeah, team should be worried coming against us. In all honesty, we have been strong. But hopefully, we continue that. Jordan Ayew's header just goes over the bar there. Obviously, the two Ayew brothers coming against each other uh, for the second time this season. But as you can see, Gaye Gay gets onto the ball here. Gaye, I don't know how to say his name, but of course, Adrian Silva lines up a shot from range and that. Is a stunning finish from Adrian Silva. Take nothing away from the Portuguese centre midfielder there. He has just lashed his foot at that. It's gone top corner. It, it, it really has. He's got tons of celebrating a very important goal there. Five goals for him in the BPL this season. Like I said, he has been a midfielder to get goals. And he looks like a very important player for Aston Villa. Um, but nevertheless, that means bad news for us. But with Charlie Austin on the pitch, it, it doesn't feel like Charlie Austin does anything for us lately. As Niasi gets on the ball, gets his shot away. Guzan makes a really good save there. But... Yeah, it looks like in the next summer window, we could be looking to push Chai Austin out and get another striker in. It's getting that serious, guys. As you can see, Mangala gets onto the ball, though. Tries to clear it only as far as Adrian and Silva. He's going to light up a shot again. He doesn't. He actually plays it off to Bakuna. Bakuna loses his man, shoots. That could have gone anywhere into the top corner there, but it does go wide. As you can see, we're going to the half time here. It's been quite an even game, in all honesty, but I think Villa have had more half possession, and we really need to be careful going into the second half now. Um, we need to find the goal as soon as possible, really. As Montero gets onto the ball, great bit of footwork there from the Ecuador man. As he gets his shot away, but Clark makes a really good block there to keep the game at 1-0 and keep his team in it. But again, on the counter-attack, we would find Charlie Austin who plays it into Omar Niassi. Niassi plays a beautiful weight through ball into her, uh, Ayu. Ayu shoots, great save from Guzan there. Can't get to the follow-up. As again, Niassi on the ball yet again. Great bit of footwork again from the striker. We'll actually play it into the path of Elite Queen Mangala, who does actually find Charlie Austin. Turns, shoots wider the mark. That is the story of Charlie Austin's life at the moment. But as you can see, they get a ball in a really dangerous position here. Carlos Gil onto the ball. What can he do? He holds it up, plays it into space to find Ghana, and that is a great finish. That just sums up our, our day to day, really, in all honesty. Um, in tons of space, and it's it, it's just not a good Swansea performance defensively. It's not like us. I've never seen someone that far open uh, for both goals in any games this season, but Idris Gaye gets the goal. He's first in the BPL, and that was a stunning effort, really, from him. As Aston Villa double their lead and probably have secured themselves at least a point in this game now. And as time goes on, the three points are looking more and more likely. It's Westwood plays it into Carlos Gill, who obviously assisted that second goal here. It's Carlos Gill getting down the line, crosses it all the way into the box, way wider than the mark there, not testing anyone. As we do bring on Redmond, Kiesung Young, and Eder to just try and get ourselves back into this game. But as you can see, uh, we do actually leave gaps of it in the back, and it does actually go through into, I'm not sure who that is, but he gets his shot away. I believe it might have been Westwood, actually, in all honesty. And Pantinamon makes the save. Right, moving on to a free kick here from Villa. They line it up again. I believe this is from Bakuna. Great save from Pantinamon. It gets cleared away only as far as their man, but we do get it away. But, unfortunately, that be how the game finishes, guys. We do lose here 2-0 against Aston Villa, and that is a shock defeat for us. Um, we haven't been used to losing more than two goals a game. We have not been used to that, and that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. Um, we're in a bit of a rough patch of form, it would seem, in um, the Bites Premier League. We lost to Norwich, now lost to Aston Villa. That's three goals considered in our last two games, which is, by Swansea standards, very poor. Man of the match goes to Gaye, 8.5 rating, very well played from him. Train done for some of the lads here, nothing really to be excited about. Grimes had a really good uh, session along with Pantillamon. Actually, so did Shelby. Redmond, uh, average. We do a go to the international break here. England go get a 1 1 draw against our Africa Coast with Tioto and Rooney, both with the goals. That's my first game in charge of England, would you believe? Very disappointing one, honestly, but what do we expect from England so far? We do get a 3 1 win against India, though. 
Uh, Shelby with two goals and one from Sterling. And John Joe Shelby really looking like a, such a decent player in all honesty. I love watching John Joe play and it's only a matter of time before he becomes one of the best players in Swansea. And I, honestly, I do mean that. But as you see here, not the best at training session is yet again for most of the guys here. But we'll get ready for a game here against Stoke who are in a relegation dogfight, a, a, a serious relegation dogfight at the moment. Uh, we do start with Niassi, Sigurdsson, Ayu, Montero, Shelby, Wanyama, Oliveira, Mangala, Taylor, Di Silvestri and Pantilamon. But yeah, they're in a serious relegation battle here. We're at the Britannia Stadium, obviously uh, known for uh, an amazing atmosphere. Stoke need their fans behind them today. They really, really do. But as you can see, they are in a, a, a dangerous relegation battle here. I believe they are maybe five points from safety at the moment. So just in the last stretch of the season, they need to perform here. The players to watch today are Jordan Shakiri and Andre Ayu, both the right midfielders. Um, two years between them, but I'd say Ayu's had a more successful season due to um, basically how poor Stokes has been. But if Stokes do go down, should I try and get Jordan Shakiri or, or maybe Ryan Shawcross or even maybe uh, Bojan? Let me know in the comment section down below. But as you can see, Stokes get onto a good start here. Uh, Jostu will get away from his man, shoots, Pantin one holds on. Good and, you know, encouraging start from Stoke there in the opening couple of minutes but it would be us to get on the counter attack there a few minutes later as Andre Ayu plays the ball into the box finds Omar Niassi just over the bar there unlucky from him on that occasion but as you can see here it would be Stoke's turn to attack now as Jordan Shakiri great boy over the top to find Joslu who gets his shot away yet again but Pantinamon does deny the Spaniard there still nil nil here at the Britannia Stadium 26 minutes into the game though we would actually find Di Silvestri now great bit of space from him it's still Lorenzo Di Silvestri beats all of the defenders finds the back of the net it is 1-0 to the Swans from the most unlikely source it is Lorenzo Di Silvestri with the goal and we, we need someone to do that in all honesty both teams have not been in great form granted but we needed someone to pop up with a goal and that's what we've done we haven't found a goal in two games uh, in, in the BPL so when it comes from a right back you know that things might be a little bit worrying but as you can see Ayu gets onto the ball here yet again Trying to get another goal here for the Swans. Crossed it all the way in. No Marley Asi just over the bar there. We are on the verge of getting a second goal. We're seeing it into a half time. It's quite an even game, honestly. Uh, despite what the stat, what the game highlights look like, it has actually been quite a, um, an even game. Both teams really going for it here. Stoke needs to try harder. But as you can see, we're in a freaking dangerous position. This is Sigurdsson territory. Just over the bar there. Over a stunning goal from Gilfrey. He's found the back of the net there. But as you can see, continue with our onslaught on the attack. It's Niassi onto the ball. Does find Sigurdsson. Sigurdsson turns away from his man. Shoots. Safe from Butland. Just goes out of play there. As you can see though, we do line up a free kick. Uh, a corner, should I say. Falls into Mangala. Butland holds on there. Good goalkeeping yet again. As we do bring on Eder, Keeson Young and Nathan Redmond now. To just try it and see this game out. And just get a good result in all honesty. As Redmond gets onto the ball here. Nathan Redmond completely loses his man here. It's still Nathan Redmond. Still Redmond. Gets his shot away against his former Birmingham teammate. Butland does see it off. Into the last minute of the game now. Eder on the attack. It's Ed there, the Portuguese striker. Sees Wanyama in space. It's Victor Wanyama. It's safe from Butland. And that would be how the game finishes. For us, it is a brilliant, brilliant 1-0 win for us. That puts more doom on Stoke and more worry and more pressure on Mark Hughes going into the last couple of games of this season. Stoke, I don't think we're going to start. We're not going to see the Barks Premier League table this episode. We've got a scrub report coming up, but... Very worrying times for Stoke, it honestly is. But man of the match, if you didn't guess it already, it would be Lorenzo De Silvestri. Obviously, 8.1 rating, one goal for him, 100% passing, 100% tackling. Very good performance indeed. Guys, that is going to bring an end to today's video. If you did enjoy it, as always, make sure you smash that like button. I'd very much appreciate it. If you are new around here, then why not hit that subscribe button too. Again, that would mean the world to me. You'll never miss a my video from me ever again. If you want to follow me on Twitter, link in the description down below, at Jack95Gamer, to follow me for all updates and keep up to date with the channel. And as always, I hope you have a really nice day. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.